I think James Berry and how he grew up in East Oakland in the 90s. I'd have been cutting motherfuckers up in kindergarten. <laughs> All right. Uh, her, her, Eric Church, and Jasmine Sullivan are slated to sing at Wait, the Super Bowl. Did you just like stumble saying Eric Church? And you almost fucked up saying her. Okay. Hurry <laughs> the fuck up. Yeah, you honestly. Got time for these intricacies. I, <laughs> that's going to be in the title somehow. Um, so, speaking of intricacies, yeah, uh, Jay Z strikes again. By the way, J Lo was terrible at the fucking inauguration. Yo, fuck, that's a whole nother. Fuck around the horn. We just fucking blow right past it and don't even look at the horn. I don't run, I don't run lights, bitch. <laughs> Mancini's trying to call again. Let me. Yeah, fam, take this shit. Take 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 that merge the call. I can't do this. <clears throat> so Mancini, hold on. We got two two more things. Two more things. Okay, that I was, need you that to was I need up. you to hit your Bernie stance for these next two things. Just sit in the Bernie chair. You need to just make that the heavy when you call in that it was Bernie sitting down. But um touchdown and turnover, uh yeah, I think it's dope, but it's really just more pandering. Uh, Jay Z's getting them on the big stage. Under different circumstances, it would have been dope, but the way the NFL's gone, and so they're gonna have the weekend who can't sing. But Dog, why the fuck has is great the NFL getting songs. so much singing for the so many black Super people? <laughs> so many black no, people. Why are they getting so much singing for the like? They're singing I the national her. anthem. Hers dope. Hers fucking. But amazing. I don't need the. I don't need her and the weekend. Okay, Jasmine Sullivan's drop. First off, like, her can actually sing. Lit. And her can actually her. sing. Her can actually or sing. Or give me the weekend and give me something lit. Like, I just so like that that clubhouse party gonna be fire. All I know is shout out to Keith. That Super Bowl. That, that all I know uh, is I'm gonna hit a quick Bowl fifteen minute nap. Yeah, indeed. Uh, during uh, that during that uh, halftime show. Well, no, Jasmine Sullivan and Eric Church are singing the national anthem, and her is gonna be there playing every instrument known to God because she's that dope, and also that Jasmine. So Shout out to that, that cameraman dropped. who zoomed in on the dude with the mask when Garth Brooks was singing. He was a real MVP. Wow, now I gotta go back and look at that. <laughs> Shout out to when Lady Gaga jumped off the stage and they did it the most basic camera cut that we all knew was coming. Alright, and... And it became a gif. The last funny. one is, Calvin Johnson said it would be a slight if he wasn't a first ballot Hall of Famer. Take her attention on that. Another call on the screen. Um... Yeah, it will yeah, be a I'm slight. Still here, guys. <laughs> Honestly, right, the last one. I, it, will, it will be a slight if uh, they didn't make him a first ballot Hall of Famer, but they might give him the TO treatment, and he played on the line, so they're probably going to just say that. Like, you played on the lines, bro. All right, and with that, Mancini, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing all right. How are you doing today? I, I, I'm hanging in there. I'm hanging in there. I, I can tell it's it's all right, buddy. It's okay. You're you're gonna make it. It's okay. <laughs> wow. So, so fuck me, right? Okay, cool. Don't be mad because me and Mancini have inside jokes now. <laughs> Mancini don't even joke with you like that. He's never joke with you like that. You don't know. Yeah, we have. You don't know what goes on in our personal text messages. Also, y'all got y'all just got other fucking uh, group chats with you guys. Okay, cool. Hey, Secrets. Secrets amongst friends. All right, cool. Hey, oh, says the guy that was my roommate. Aw. Exactly. so sweet. Did you just squeal like a pig? What was that sound? Was that the microwave? Was that's that the, the microphone time. moving? I'm trying to add Izzy and Eric on FaceTime. I thought during, that was the, the call. Yeah, you just hung up on both of them. Somehow. So that way they that way they feel included because Kenny keeps hanging up on them. I didn't hang up dick. on anybody. I don't even have them. Dick. Bro, I merged the call and that, then they hung up. We were like, it was, it was, I swear, I, I just re-listened to our episode, our crossover, and I was like, oh my god, producer Kenny strikes again, call in five minutes, okay, five minutes go by, and then I'm on hold for like eight more minutes, and I'm like, wait, Bruh. 13 and 5 don't make, aren't the same number, what is this? <laughs> hey man, wow. we went to CSUN, numbers don't make sense. Well, my phone died, so sorry Eric and Izzy, but I tried. I mean, you could use my Jesus phone. Jesus Christ, this is a lot. <sighs> Are, they'll, are they'll we sure something. there's not a coop outside about to break into the studio? Because that's what it fucking feels like with all these technology difficulties. Did you, did you say a coop? Yeah. You mean a coup? Whatever. You know I got a dog. <laughs> there's not a fucking, there's what, a mini coop in the <laughs> parking lot? <laughs> <laughs> you want a brand new car. Here's a coop. <laughs> Fuck. All right, man, see me. Uh-huh. So obviously today... Technology well, is just failing us. Today, it's, depending on when you listen to this podcast, you know, 
we would have had our 46th president for a day, a week, whatever. But Mancini... How's the planet going? The caldera has not erupted in Yellowstone yet, so we're still here. How are you feeling about everything that's happened on this happened this week, these past few months since we've talked to you on one two one two one? How are you mm-hmm. feeling? And forty six B. I'm well I'll put it this way. I certainly feel like there's some pressure lifted not having uh not having a six foot three Cheeto as president anymore, <laughs> but like the boredom and I don't know what you'd call it, like the the kind of depression of austerity and neoliberalism is kind of crashing down in a way where it's like, oh, it's gonna be boring and and worse now. Oh, oh, and we're gonna like pull a North Korea and be like, oh, look at our glorious leader. Oh, this is this is gross. This is not good journalism. Um. I mean, it's it's been a weird first few weeks of the year uh, between the whole attack on the Capitol building, which was not a coup nor a coup. Uh, I <laughs> he can't spell like, he can't spell either spelling. By the way, <laughs> you know he I've, can't. I've been a, well, I'll put it here's the thing: coup coup has an e at the end. Coup is just coup without the e. Just making that clear. Uh, you just confused him worse. Ah, uh, whatever. But, uh, you know, and then having the whole impeachment thing, which arguably is a great idea in in theory, but it's also kind of like he's gone now and he's so bored with his life. I genuinely don't think he's going to run for president again. It's but... like it's like breaking up with someone before. Like you guys already came to an agreement that you're going to break up. Yeah. Like, like I, okay. I, I, I've, I've kind of lived that, so I, I can 100 agree. Um, well, in, in well, safe to say, terms, uh, Trump and Biden won't be going to Brazil anytime soon. In simple, in simple Journalists terms, don't hey, do I, well in I, Brazil. I still, I still have my way to get there. Um, but like in simpler terms, it's like it's like when somebody's like run out of good stuff on Doctor Who, and it's like, okay, we let's come on, we we need a new Doctor here. Uh. And that's what this is like. It's like, okay, we've had one funny president. Now it's time to get this other funny one that says things like, come on, man. Um, or or talks about putting uh, young African-American kids in front of the radio. Like, oh, that's 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 real education, Jack. Uh, <laughs> that's our new president now. So so with, with the whole inauguration, I think the, the common theme, at least what I, what I heard. Mm-hmm. Was about unity, and here in LA, you know, we have a, a large conservative right, borderline alt right, you know, news talk radio hemisphere, atmosphere, whatever you want to call it, mm. and their whole take on that, as I was cruising through it, was just essentially like, yeah, you can say, you know, it's about unity. For the liberals, but guess what? There's this large millions of people who still voted for Trump who fundamentally disagree with you on literally everything. And so the election how, was a farce to them. So how are you going to unite that? And I'm just curious, what is your take on both? The idea of unity and also hmm. the practice of it in this next four to eight years. Well, I think to to start with with the second half, I think what we're going to possibly see is what kind of what happened after 2012, where you know, in that in that election, it was basically okay. Clearly, we're still too far right to unite and appeal to people we've appealed to people that are on the fringe that are so out there that they think donald trump is this god that's going to free us from the you know cabal of pedophiles and whatever if you believe in QAnon. but like i think it's it's going to be kind of a restart where a lot of those people are going to go back to whatever crevices and sewers that they came from and 
I, I, I don't know. It, it's really hard to tell where the Republican Party itself will be, how it will be going forward. It could try and moderate. I highly doubt it, given that they've done everything to go further and further right for the last 20, hell, 40 years. I mean, that's what they said about the liberals, right? Well, the, the, the Democrats, if anything, they're showing there there's a true split there like you you genuinely have those that want to appeal to the center they want to appeal to conservatives and republicans that's arguably why we have joe biden but then you have but that's what i'm saying is you know you're saying like oh you know you can't go back you've been working more and more right and that's kind of what they were saying about the left and the left was like well we don't want to lose again so we got to revert back a little bit if, if anything, if anything, I think it, it's going to be a very steady, uh, and I can't think of a better term, so this is going to sound almost like a pun, but it's going to be a slow progression for sort of the quote-unquote progressive left to grow more and more numbers and appeal to those on the right that could be interested. I mean, Bernie, Bernie was somebody that appealed to Republicans, like even Trump supporters – there were some that thought Bernie was okay. And so I think there is a balance there. The problem is, is politics by its very nature, by, by its very nature is antagonistic. And so Mm. having the system that we have, it's, it's really hard to see how unity is going to come about, especially when the right is going to do everything it can to basically say Biden has his own foreign entanglements with China, which they're laughable and they're mostly not true, but they're scandalous enough to where it's like, yeah, there, there's probably some credibility there, but you're not going to get everybody to agree on it. So I think it, it, seeing what unity could look like going forward, I think we could get a shot in the arm with Biden, but that we didn't get with Barack Obama, but it, it's really hard to tell, to know what that could look like, uh, especially, you know, four years from now. So let me ask you this. So Mm -hmm. when in the last election, when Trump was elected, you know, we had this whole phase where we're like, uh, Facebook, Russia, the election, like, (laughs) what the fuck was that? Mm -hmm. Right. But at some point, everyone on level just kind of like moved on. Mm -hmm. Do you see that happening with the right? Which, you know, actually doesn't have any sort of basis like before. Mm-hmm. No, no standing ground on theirs, but they just refuse to relent on the idea that the election was rigged. Like, mm-hmm. are they going to relent in these next years and just move on? Or are we are they still going to be two years from now? Trump's still our president. He never lost. Brother. I I mean, I, I think that uh, <laughs> at done. least... I'll put it this way. Whenever uh, the recess ends with the House of Representatives, I think, you know, and obviously with the pandemic still raging, it's it's still a little bit hard to say how bipartisan things are going to look. Um, But I do think that with Biden and I know, Kenny, this is something you and I have talked about ad nauseum about Biden's past and how. He acquiesced to segregationists like Strom Thurmond. Um, I think... Bull Connor. Don't forget that one. It it could totally work to Biden's advantage and to helping government... To basically making government look as though it's helping the American people. But, you know, it's just... it's, It's going to be at a cost. And so I think two years down the road... I think by then you'll have most Republicans will be probably or at least I'll put it this way. Republicans in government will have moved on from the whole, oh, the election was stolen. Trump's still my president. I think that will be possibly cleansed. I can't say for sure that it will be. The reason why I asked you is because you're on ground zero. So that's why. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like right now, it's it's kind of like, you know, when I'll put it this way, when Mitch McConnell And Kevin McCarthy, the Republican leadership in the House and the Senate, acknowledge Biden as president. That sets the standard for largely everybody else in their caucuses. So it's kind of like, you know, other than 
a couple of lunatics like uh, Madison Cawthorn, who 